I am at the very pinnacle of all of that. So it all became my fault. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 creepiest things that happened behind the scenes of The Exorcist. We had a, a fire, but still a mystery. This, this story was begging to be a flop and could easily have turned into a laugh riot. Well then let's introduce ourselves. I'm Damien Karras. And I'm the devil. Now kindly undo these straps. For this list, we'll be looking at weird or unsettling things that reportedly happened during the production and release of The Exorcist. Let us know in the comments which of these things you thought was the creepiest. Number 10. A layer of snow covered the set one morning. One morning, we had a lovely surprise. We came in and found that there was like a thin, thin layer of snow over the entire set. This wouldn't sound so bad, except that this part of the set was indoors. The snow was caused by the crew running air conditioners at the same time, bringing temperatures down to 30 degrees below zero. Director William Friedkin pushed for this because he wanted to see the breath coming out of characters' mouths for the climax where the two priests confront the demon. Cold? Yeah. The snow discovered on the set could be a happy coincidence for a movie about a winter wonderland, but for a film about demonic possession, it would be more likely interpreted as a strange omen. I cast you out! <laughs> Unclean spirit! Show it up your ass! Number 9. Early screenings had controversial responses. Damien! <laughs> Amen. When filmgoers went to see The Exorcist around Christmas in 1973, they didn't know what they were in for. Barf bags were given to the audience in some theaters, just in case they couldn't stomach graphic scenes like the pea soup vomiting. What is it? <laughs> the film was so intense, there were reported cases of people fainting and others needing medical attention. Evangelist Billy Graham said that the film itself was cursed, as if each film reel containing the film literally had the devil inside. During one premiere in Rome, not far from where the movie was being shown, a church was hit with lightning. So maybe Reverend Graham was onto something. Number eight, Ellen Burstyn was badly injured. I had a rig around my midriff with a wire coming out the back and the stuntman was pulling me. Wanting everything to be as grounded in reality as much as possible, Friedkin placed a huge emphasis on practical effects. And Billy said, well, it has to look real. I said, I understand but I'm telling you, I could get hurt. This led to physically demanding shoots for several cast members, especially actress Ellen Burstyn, who played the mother of the possessed girl. Unfortunately, while filming the infamous crucifix scene where Burstyn's character was thrown on her back, Burstyn permanently injured her spine due to a mishap with a harness that was pulling her. Billy motioned to Owen to tilt the camera down on me. And I saw it and I was so furious and said, turn the effing camera off. <laughs> in fact, the screams she gives in the scene are genuine because of the pain the injury caused. Knowing this makes the scene more disturbing. <laughs> Number seven, Linda Blair was threatened by strangers. It was so controversial, so of course I am at the very pinnacle of all of that. For her work playing the possessed girl, Reagan McNeil, Linda Blair received a Best Supporting Actress Oscar nomination at the age of 15. You really don't want me to play, huh? No, I do. Captain Howdy said no. However, she may have done too good of a job. It has been a really difficult sort of foster because you have a lot of supporters and a lot of people who didn't support the film, and in doing so, they would attack me. Believing her performance was glorifying Satan, several people sent death threats to Blair, and bodyguards were sent by Warner Brothers to look after her for six months. Are you comfortable, Reagan? Yes. Unfortunately, it isn't too surprising that a popular movie about religion stirred enough passion in people to do something as irrational as threaten a child for merely playing a role in a movie. Number six, one bad moviegoing experience resulted in a lawsuit. And I'll, I'll have to talk to Warner Brothers and see why there's no holy water or crosses there to assist the public through this experience. Remember how some 1973 moviegoers couldn't handle The Exorcist because of the graphic material? Well, apparently one woman was so shocked by the film, she fainted and broke her jaw. In response, she decided to sue Warner Brothers, which is the studio that made the film. The suit allegedly claimed that the film sent out subliminal messages that caused her to pass out. How these supposed messages could cause such an effect is unclear. When I touch your forehead, open your eyes. 
wanting to avoid bad publicity, Warner Brothers reportedly settled the suit out of court. For better or for worse, the movie has had an effect on people. Number five, the woman behind the voice. I'm afraid you might hurt yourself, Reagan. I'm not Reagan. One of the qualities that made demon-possessed Reagan so scary was the voice work of actress Mercedes McCambridge. To achieve the otherworldly voice, McCambridge chain-smoked, drank Jack Daniels whiskey, and even swallowed raw eggs. Who are you? Here, buddy. Originally, Friedkin was going to leave McCainbridge off the credits because he thought it would be more effective if the audience thought that Linda Blair was behind the voice. I'm Damien Carroll's. And I'm that devil. Now kindly undo these straps. However, McCainbridge was able to get her name on the credits with legal action. McCainbridge suffered a great personal tragedy in 1987 when her son committed multiple crimes against his family before ending his own life. Number four, the film's production literally needed an exorcist. Father Tom Birmingham was in the film and was the technical advisor. There have been rumors that the exorcist was cursed. While working on the film, a carpenter lost a thumb and a lighting technician lost one of his toes. How do you go about getting an exorcism? I beg your pardon? A fire burned down a large part of the set, which we'll get to later. To counter such eerie events, Friedkin asked Reverend Thomas Birmingham, a Jesuit priest who served as a technical advisor for the film and played the character Tom, to perform an exorcism. I'll work with you then if, on one condition, that you take it seriously. I don't want another Rosemary's baby. I want somebody that really will confront the awesome problem of the evil in God's world. Believing such a ritual unnecessary, Reverend Birmingham declined the request, but later performed a blessing on the cast and the set. Guess it wasn't an excellent day for an exorcism. It was an excellent day for an exorcism. Number three, the film is based on real life events, sort of. The fictional story of The Exorcist can be traced back to some real life events that happened in 1949. If you were disturbed by The Exorcist, at least you could say it was only a movie, right? Not so fast. And in class, I heard some details about a so-called case of possession and an exorcism that was going on somewhere nearby. The movie was actually based on William Peter Blatty's 1971 novel, which was partly based on the 1949 case of a 14-year-old boy from Maryland who was reportedly possessed. What we do know is that for a period of about three months, a 14-year-old boy who'd grown up in this area and had been experimenting with a Ouija board underwent some form of illness that caused his personality to change, caused welts and lettering to appear on his body and apparently cause some poltergeist activity. The boy was taken to St. Louis, Missouri, where a group of priests performed exorcisms on him at both a relative's home and a hospital, with the rituals lasting for weeks. You heard the story. Same thing here. Much like in the movie, the bed the child was in shook as he convulsed. <laughs> And according to the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, the child also allegedly spit a foul substance at the priest during one exorcism. Number two, most of the set burned down because of a freak accident. In my 32 years of, of, of making films, I've never had a set burned down. One of the biggest setbacks to production was a fire that burned down the house where the film is set. It burns! Oh, it burns! The fire was supposedly caused by a bird that flew directly into a circuit box. However, the weird part is the only room that didn't burn in the fire was Reagan's room. Makes you wonder how that room of all places was spared, doesn't it? Could it be Satan? They couldn't find a, a, an electrical problem. They couldn't find an arsonist. They couldn't find a, uh, any, any uh, substantial reason that, that that occurred. Because of the fire, the film's production had to delay filming for six weeks. Then Friedkin called me and said, would you come down and exorcise the set? This was one of the events mentioned earlier that led to Reverend Birmingham performing a special blessing. He was coming to judge both the living and the dead and the world by fire. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the film is linked to nine deaths. You're gonna die up there. Perhaps the greatest piece of evidence that The Exorcist is cursed is the number of deaths reportedly tied to the film around the time that it was made. There are a couple of unfortunate deaths during the filming. There were nine deaths. 
which is an enormous amount of deaths. During its production, a set technician and night watchman died. Additionally, two main cast members, Max von Sydow and Linda Blair, lost family members while shooting the film. Shortly after production, two cast members died. Jack McGowan, who played the movie director Burke Dennings, and actress Vasiliki Maliaros, who played Father Karras' mother. How are you, Mama? I'm so glad to you look see you. Good? Coincidentally, their respective characters also died in the movie. I haven't heard. Burke's dead. Death is an unpleasant subject, and the grim tone of The Exorcist gives the deaths connected to it an unsettling feeling. Listen. Give us time! Let her die! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.